Okay guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at lightweight blade options. So without any further ado, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and Instagram. The support means a ton. And now let's talk about it. Okay, so first off, I do wanna kinda of disclaim that when it comes to wilderness knives, lightweight isn't necessarily always the best and you're always giving up something when you are primarily fixating on one singular point, like being lightweight. And so if you are singularly focusing on being lightweight, you're not gonna have the most functional or maybe the most durable tools, but overall there are some pretty good options for solid lightweight knives. And as a whole, I wanted to make a video of some of the knives that I like for being lightweight. And the reason why I wanted to do this is that a lot of times the biggest barrier to entry or the biggest barrier to carry for a lot of people is the fact that, you know, knives are bulky, knives are heavy, you know, if, if you had to lug around, you know, this big kind of setup here all day, especially if you're just going, you know, hiking or backpacking, you know, carrying a knife like the CRK Pacific is a great option. Like it is a great tool, but it's not necessarily the most realistic option for every environment, every circumstance and every situation. And moreover, if this is the one knife that you carry, you might end up not wanting to carry it or not carrying it because it's too big, too bulky, too heavy. Okay, so with that out of the way, now let's talk about lightweight blade options. So the first one up on the list is going to be the Spyderco Street Buoy. Now this is of course on the larger side and still incredibly lightweight at around six ounces. This blade is nearly 10 inches long. So to put that in perspective, so to put that into perspective, here is a Gerber Prodigy, which is about the same size, but substantially heavier. So you can see Prodigy might just be a tiny bit bigger, but overall about the same size on these guys. So really close in size, but yet this thing is, you know, probably about 12 ounces. This guy is six ounces. So part of that, of course, is due to the fact that it is a thinner blade stock as you guys can see there but uh, overall you know it is a thinner blade but still retains a lot of size to it and so you know to give you an idea you know these are you know full-sized blades they are just substantially lighter than full-sized blades so uh, that is the first one up on the list and a really good multi-role very multi-role capable blade of being pushed into you know general woods tasks camp tasks and uh, food prep things such of that nature it's also going to be reasonably rust resistant being made out of bg10 stainless steel so pretty good choice and honestly not terribly expensive at around 120 dollars Okay, next one up on the list and very similar to the Street Buoy is going to be the Spyderco Aquasalt. And the Aquasalt is the most corrosion resistant on the, on the list, but that's not actually the reason why it made the list, though the corrosion resistance is certainly appreciated. It is also right around six ounces in weight and being once again, another knife that is about 10 inches in overall length. It is very, uh, it offers you a lot of length, a lot of size, and a lot of usability, but not a lot of weight. Now, granted, once again, like we mentioned, some of that trade-off is in thickness of the spine. And uh, so, unfortunately, you know, it might not be the most tough blade, especially around the tip. The tip is going to be reasonably fragile, but it is certainly going to be able to do a wide variety of tasks. And especially, like I've mentioned in other videos, if your primary goal is to do things like food prep, this might be a very logistical knife for you. Moving into other blades too, uh, the next one up on the list is going to be the Mora Konsbul. And the Konsbul is another incredibly light knife. The knife, believe it or not, is actually 3.5 ounces, which is really ridiculous to think about when you actually think about the fact that once again, you know, putting it in perspective, getting a full-size knife, roughly, it is a little bit smaller than the Aqua Salt and the Street Buoy, but you know, you're getting a reasonably full-size knife that is, you know, still full-sized handle, reasonably full-size blade, but 3.5 ounces in weight. Now, once again, similar to those blades, one of the reasons or how you're getting there is partly by having a super thin one tenth of an inch thick blade, but it, but it is lightweight and it is pretty 
overall durable. I have batoned and hard used the cons spool. It holds up just fine. In addition, that thinner uh, size or thinner thickness does make it very, very slicey, especially due to its multi-angle grind does contribute with the sliciness of this blade overall. So it is very, very slicey, very thin and very lightweight while still retaining a good amount of durability. Okay, so next up on the list and another one that is almost as lightweight as the last option we mentioned coming in at four ounces is going to be the Mora Con Spool. Now this one actually is, no, sorry, the Mora Companion. Now this one is actually not a companion. This is the Clipper, which actually is probably as lightweight as the Con Spool because this has a half tang, but I just like to pull out the Clipper. I do have several companions. I just like the, uh, the Clipper more. This is the original version of the companions. But once again, another very lightweight blade, very thin. And this one is actually in carbon, but you can also get stainless options similar to the cons Bool. But either way you slice it, this blade is going to be super cheap at coming in under $20. This one I also forgot to mention is around $40 to $35. But uh, both of these are very budget offerings, but also at the same time, pretty darn lightweight blades that are super easy to carry. And if you are kind of looking at having blades on you at all times, you know, these are hard options to go wrong with. And definitely one of the heavier options on the list at 5.2 ounces is going to be the SE3. Now the SE3 is still very thin, actually similarly thick in thickness to the Morricon Spool and Companion, but this one is going to be made out of 1095. And being that it is SE, it is built a little bit heavier, a little bit more robust. And this one, while it's not necessarily going to snap or break, may bend on you if you're particularly hard on it, but it is very durable and once again very slicey very lightweight overall i mean coming in at under six ounces for once again a still reasonably full-sized blade is pretty incredible so that one like i said not the lightest but not the heaviest on the list either okay probably the lightest one and the last fixed blade on the lightweight blades option is going to be the mora eldress now this one comes in at 2.25 ounces and is very small very thin but extremely lightweight so depending on what exactly you need out of your fixed blade you know this is obviously not going to be perfect for every situation but if a lot of what you're doing is just striking ferro rods to start fires feather sticking maybe you know just looking to cut open some packaging or process some food this is not going to be a half bad option for those types of tasks now once again do keep in mind you have a very very tiny blade on this but it is still an incredibly lightweight knife and the nice thing what i really do love about the eldresses or eldress eye whatever you want to call them um they are still you're still able to get a full four finger grip on these blades. So even though your blade and your actual cutting edge is very tiny, you still are able to get a nice full grip on it and hold it comfortably. So that is the Mora Eldress. Okay, now let's talk about some folders. So once again, coming in at about two and a half ounces, similar to the Eldress, it is going to be the Benchmade 556. And this one is pretty lightweight, pretty small, you know, pretty thin, but is still super functional. I've used 556s for a long time. I've had several of them over the course of the years, and I really do like the Benchmade 556. It's very functional, and personally for me, it's like this is two and a quarter ounces, this is two and a half ounces, but if you look at it for that extra quarter ounce, you're getting, you know, a longer blade length, an even longer handle, and I think that, you know, if you can accommodate having the folding knife, the folding knife has a lot of advantages to it that, like I said, you're going to have a nice handle and a little bit longer blade length for doing more tasks. Now, these are both still incredibly small knives, so it's not like you're going to be able to, you know, baton a tree down or something like that with either option, but they are going to give you, but that Benchmade 5 6 will give you that little bit of extra length and a little bit of extra handle length as well for comfort. Next one, of course, on the list that probably surprises no one is the Benchmade Bug Out 535. And this is the full size bug out. And this is the full sized bug out. And this one, I want to say, you know, so this one, we're going to say it comes in at about two ounces. Now, the reason why I'm kind of just broad 
broad stroking that is that there are a plethora of different options. You can get aluminum handle scales, carbon fiber handle scales. The original stock weight of the basic uh, FRN versions is 1.8 ounces, so incredibly lightweight. And this one being the G10 version, I believe is right around that same weight. But generally speaking, it's about two ounces so this is the lightest one on the list and the bug out was truly designed to be a super lightweight thin down version of bench made kind of general knives so this one like i said is going to be the lightest on the list and the cool thing is if you can get over the thickness because there is a substantial thickness differential if you look at the eldris versus the bug out you have a noticeable difference in overall length you know you have a definitely a longer handle definitely a longer blade and this is why when it comes to super lightweight knives i tend to be more a fan of folding blades because just for what folding blades can do you know if you don't need that extra durability that a fixed blade offers you know reasonably uh, this is going to provide you a longer handle to hold on to that's generally going to be more comfy and a longer blade that will be more usable so similar to the 556 the 535 is going to be a really solid option and to answer a lot of people because i always get tons of comments about this no i have not had the omega springs break on me granted i don't necessarily fiddle with this blade a ton but i do open it and close it quite a bit throughout its life and these are still the original omega springs they haven't broken they're still working just fine and so yeah this is i have not had any issues with my bug out but uh that is the bug out itself. Once again, too, you know, for what it is, it is still an incredibly lightweight blade. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the Spyderco Para 3. Now this one's still pretty durable and it has the awesome compression lock, so it should actually be fairly durable uh, as far as like batoning goes if you did want to hypothetically hard use it. But the Para 3 comes in, comes in at a little bit of a heavier weight at 3.4 ounces. That's primarily due to the fact that it does have underneath these G10 scales a inlaid steel liner on both sides of the handle so that's why it is a little bit heavier and you can definitely feel it especially when you're used to holding something like the bench made bug out that's literally just slabs of g10 um, so it's definitely a little bit heavier than that but at the same time too still very lightweight and you know when we're talking about a 5.2 ounce fixed blade versus you know 3.4 ounce blade you know still lighter weight and it's still very usable one thing i do really like about the para 3 and i think what a lot of people love about the para line of knives is the fact that you have a really good forward finger choil so you can get up close to that cutting edge and it feels or it just makes the blade a little bit more usable Aside from that though, the Para 3 is very compact, very small, and once again, pretty darn lightweight. Okay, last one up on the list is going to be the Spyderco Spidey Chef. It is the same weight as, or reasonably the same weight as the Spyderco Para 3. So coming right around that three ounce mark, that's primarily due to its, uh, not G10, but titanium handles. So it just has pure titanium handles and uh, that does make it a bit lightweight. And of course you have that nice LC200N blade. So overall, it's a little bit larger than the Para 3, but it is still quite lightweight due to its uh, titanium handles and it's overall reasonably thin blade. Once again, similar to the size of the Benchmade bug out. And the nice thing about these knives, while of course the Spidey Chef is definitely a little bit heavier, still very lightweight, but you know, you are getting a tremendous amount of usability out of these blades. So you're getting a good amount of usability, good amount of size in a folding knife. And of course, one of the nice advantages to folding knives is you know, you can fold them in half, literally throw them in your pocket and you're ready to go. So there is a ton of advantages to folding knives when we really start talking about lightweight blade options. Once again, they're definitely not gonna be as durable as a standard fixed blade, but they do have a lot of pros to them, especially depending on what your use case or use situation looks like. If you're not really hard using a knife, maybe folders will be better better for you so anyways guys that is a handful of super lightweight blade options that are out there on the market hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out